California is often considered to be probably one of, if not the most progressive, uh, the most liberal state in the union. It was the Supreme Court Justice Brandeis who said that the states are laboratories of democracy. And what he meant by that is that the nice thing about the way our system of government works is uh, states as their own sovereign powers can experiment with policy ideas, uh, taxation, uh, education, all of the different things that, uh, that make up our civic body. A lot of what is going on here in California um, is what is being argued that should be done at the federal level. Are all these ideas that the progressives and the left generally tend to offer us? Super high taxation is supposed to pay for things like income equality, opportunity, better schools, better infrastructure. So is all of that really working? Well, tonight we're going to look at that on the Skeptic Tank and find out if it's all just progressive bullshit after all. This is not mind control. Think about it. I've lived in California pretty much all my life. What we've been promised here as Californians too is that if we pay the super high taxes that they're asking for, and they are arguably the highest in the country, then that will provide more opportunity, more equality. It'll fight homelessness. It'll improve the quality of our schools and education. It'll change our infrastructure. And what is actually happening here doesn't look like any of that, except for the fact that we're paying the highest taxes in the country. What I'd really like to know is where the hell my money's going and exactly what value am I supposed to be getting for that money? So let's take a look. Every year, uh, U.S. News and World Report puts out this article where they have uh, ranked all the states. And when you look here, what's really interesting is that with all of the high taxes and all the progressive ideas, and the progressive ideas are, you know, we fight for the little guy, we're for the working man, right? We are the the cart, the the uh, uh, party of the of the uh, workers right? The workers can't even afford to live here in most of the places in California. So California ranks number 31. The state of California is becoming so expensive to live in that there are more poor people here than in pretty much any other state after expenses. So we can see here that, you know, healthcare is number 11. Education's actually uh, gone up a few spots to 26. I believe it was 37 uh, recently. The economy, of course, is the fourth in the country, and that's because what drives the world right now is technology, and we have probably one of the biggest technology epicenters in the world here in Silicon Valley. I live just about a 50-minute ride from the heart of Silicon Valley. Um, the, what's really interesting here, though, is that if you look, opportunity is number 46. 46 in opportunity. The people who live here, with the prices going up, the taxes going up, and the problems that come with it, are having a hard time um, maintaining their incomes, uh, finding new work, finding other things uh, to do in order to maintain their lives. The other thing that's really interesting here is that the poverty rate is among the highest in the country at 14.3%. The national average is 14. So we're actually at the low end of the scale. The median, this is what I, this is really what I wanted to focus on a bit here. The median household income is 67,739. And when you look at the national average of 58,552, that sounds really fantastic, doesn't it? Well, it's not. The cost of living index is 128 and the national average is 100. Our infrastructure is 43.6%. Uh, national average is 22%. We're number 38. We're one of the worst in the country. Those high taxes, the gas taxes that we pay for, I'm not just talking about the income tax. This is supposed to be providing us with better infrastructure, and it's not here. Crime and corrections is um, kind of uh, surprising, um, but I can tell you, you know, in terms of overall, number 17 is kind of surprising, but when you look at the violent crime rate, it's ridiculously high. The incarceration rate is actually just a little bit lower um, and uh, the juvenile uh, incarceration, uh, incarceration rate is actually pretty darn close to the national average. Quality of life ranking, 50th. We are dead last. Our population is 30, just, just shy of 40 million people here. And our quality of living is ranked dead last. Our natural environment, number 44, social, number 47. The West Coast states have the highest rate of homelessness. 
If I drive into Oakland or Emeryville, which is really close to Oakland, or drive across the bay to San Francisco, which is, you know, it's an hour drive from here, um, the homeless encampments are huge. In this case, there are entire cities. There are tent cities. The, the, um, the municipalities have actually brought out porta-potties and, um, and makeshift showers, etc. The homeless rate across the nation has been dropping uh, pretty regularly. Uh, since 2007, right here, despite the modest increase, the number of people experiencing homelessness in the U.S. has plunged almost 15% since 2007. But if we look at the rates here, California and Oregon, two of the most progressive liberal states, 68.9% and 61.7%. One of the things that you, you might find very interesting, and I did, is that I've been down to Venice Beach, which is, uh, Venice Beach is in Southern California. It is also one of the most expensive places to live in the country. Residents in the community where homes go for an average $1.9 million say the number of physical assaults and harassment and break-ins have increased as the homeless population in Venice has risen. Venice is also where, not necessarily movie stars, though some do have houses there, but uh, people in the movie industry, you know, the, the well-paid executives and uh, producers. Many of them live in Venice. Um, and, and again, you know, at an average price of $1.9 million, the really, really nice stuff doesn't start until you hit about $3 million and going up from there. This is where you would find a bastion of progressive ideals. This is where you get the people who wag their finger at you and tell you that you're not doing enough and that you need to stop driving your SUV while they, you know, jet around the world. This is uh, the, the place where the, the folks that live there um, tell you that you have too much privilege. And here, they are really kind of upset because the homeless encampments are right next to their golf courses. They're right next to their restaurants. And even worse, they're right next to their neighborhoods. There are actually residents advocating for driving the homeless out of Venice, literally driving them out by shipping them off somewhere, which is such a proto-fascist move, said television writer Evan Dunsky, who's lived there for, in the area for 27 years. And then what? Do we have to build a wall around Venice? What, this is kind of interesting because there were, uh, there were actually literally people who were uh, gathering and discussing the idea of putting the homeless folks on buses and shipping them to different towns. Because of course this problem encroaches on their lifestyle and their, on their way of life. This, this is something actually has been updated since then. The city's plan to open a 154-bed transitional bridge housing shelter further inflamed residents. At a city council meeting in October, council member Mike Bonin, whose district includes Venice Beach and L.A. Mayor Eric Garcetti, were targets of angry chants and tirades that effectively centered on whether or not Venice was being asked to unfairly shoulder the burden for the entire West Side's homeless population, the Hollywood Reporter noted. Uh... This is, it really, again, it interests me because this is the, you know, this is where all the do-gooders are. And um, there's a lot of people who are really pissed off that they're going to build this homeless shelter uh, near their neighborhood. Also from The Hill, California made major news this month reclaiming a, value eco a valuable economic marker and surpassing Britain as the fifth largest economy in the world. However, the Golden State remains one of the most unequal in the nation. And again, I have to say that this is a progressive this is on their platform. Income inequality must be dealt with. You know, we have to tax the millionaires and the billionaires. Um, well, the millionaires and the billionaires in California are taxed pretty heavily as it is. Uh, property taxes are, are really high. We pay taxes for pretty much everything. I, I, they haven't figured out how to tax the air that I'm breathing yet, but I, I have no doubt that it's coming. Our new governor, Gavin Newsom, has decided that he wants to tax the drinking water. So, you know, if, if it can be taxed, they will tax it. However, the Golden State remains one of the most unequal in the nation. It has both billions of dollars in Silicon Valley and rampant homelessness. Uh, its efforts to eliminate poverty instead accentuate it. And its tax system inadvertently aids those who are already wealthy. With the middle class leaving in droves, California society represents a modern feudal system of robber barons and the poor. And this is, whenever I bring up it's kind of interesting because I get a lot of shit for bringing up, you know, the fact that California is failing, that, you know, that it has been destructive. Um, and what I get is, well, people are still coming here. So what? Uh, to me, that's a non sequitur. It's like, it's like saying 
that um, you know that uh, you know uh, Sears failed, but hey, you know birds still like to build nests. It's totally unrelated. So what? People are still coming here. Doesn't mean anything about the failure of the quote leadership of this state to do what it is that they promise us. That they go out and blather on and on that they're going to take care of. They don't. So now let's look at this. This is fantastic. This is where I live. I live in the San Francisco Bay Area. Families earning $117,000 now qualify as low income in California's Bay Area. So um, we just saw that the, the uh, median and the national average uh, income was $55,000, dollars um, the low end, the low income in the Bay Area is 117 grand. The median home price in the Bay Area is $960,000. So again, that's the middle. This house is completely run down. You can see that it's been fenced off. There's crap in the yard and there's cars. You know, the garage door doesn't close. The roof clearly needs to, to be fixed. It, the asking price, the listing price on the house was $1.1 million. And it sold, I believe, for, here it is, uh, $1.2 two, three million dollars. Most of the uh, teachers that teach in Oakland or teach in San Francisco, the firefighters, um, union workers, you know, the people that, again, that the liberals, the, the progressives have always stood for, and they have. I, I don't even dispute that. The liberals have been the uh, supporters of the working man for the little guy. I'm sorry, man, but the Democratic Party doesn't stand for that anymore. I'm not saying the Republicans do. That's not what I'm saying. So now, with all of this being said, the new governor wants to provide, quote, free health care to everyone, including people who are here illegally. Uh, and I have to pay for that. And I'm already paying for all of the other shit that doesn't work. So, and this is, I got to tell you, with 2020 coming up and we have a presidential election right around the corner, they're going to start, man, we're going to have to go through all of that stupid shit that we went through three and a half years ago, again, real soon, uh, is that you're going to have people that want to give California ideas uh, a voice in Washington. They, they actually want these kinds of things to, to be, I mean, I heard Kamala Harris talking today about how uh, healthcare is a fundamental right. No, it isn't. It can't be a fundamental right. She obviously didn't study very hard when she went to Harvard because uh, the fact of the matter is fundamental rights are things that cannot be granted or taken from you. They are things that either are or are not. Healthcare is not something that, can, that, that can't, that, that simply exists. It's something that can be granted, changed, taken away. Those, that's, not what the, that's not what a right is. So if you look down here... Um, it, this really kills me. Newsom says, far away, judges and politicians may try and turn their back on our progress, but we will never waver in our pursuit of guaranteed health care for all Californians. Um, I'd like to find out, I'd like to see exactly what progress he's talking about. If he's talking about the state sliding down to being 50th in opportunity and 50th in quality of living, well, then, yeah, you might as well just finish it off, as far as I'm concerned. Um, illegal Im immigration costs California taxpayers more than $25 billion a year. We're always hearing about how people who are here illegally um, cannot use public services. Well, they do. The fiscal burden of illegal immigration on California taxpayers, according to FAIR's report, is $25.3 billion a year. Funding K-12 through education for children who are themselves illegal aliens and for the citizens of children of illegal aliens accounted for the largest share of the cost to ta taxpayers at $14.4 billion. Justice and law enforcement costs, policing, court, and incarcera incarceration associated with illegal aliens soared to more than $4.4 billion. Medical services cost taxpayers approximately $4 billion, including $388 million associated with 68,000 births to illegal alien mothers. Public assistance, low-cost meal programs, free immunizations, etc. are available to residents regardless of legal status. $792 million um, for the California taxpayers. Clean up San Francisco's streets. Tourist industry is pleading. People injecting themselves with drugs in broad daylight. Dirty needles and other garbage strewn all over the sidewalks, tent camps, and human feces. 
The threatening behavior of some people will appear to either be mentally ill or high. And petty theft. And I have to tell you, there's actually, and I, this is no bullshit, it's no per human shit either. There's actually an app that will show you where all of the human feces on the sidewalks in the neighborhoods of San Francisco is reported. You know, the piles of needles, for example, are not in isolated areas. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's absolutely incredible. So it's literally a shithole. There are conventions that come to town and bring all kinds of business to the uh, residents and to the shop owners and to, you know, bring commerce to San Francisco. The Game Developers Conference, which drew 28,000 international gaming professionals to Moscone Center last month, found itself in the public eye after some tweets frustrated conference goers went viral. An Australian gamer tweeted that San Francisco is a dangerous city and the conference should no longer be hosted there. The conference is scheduled to place to take place again at Moscone in March, but a spokesperson told the author of this, uh, of this article, we're evaluating feedback from the GDC attendees and our post-show survey and are keen to hear about everyone's experiences as we plan for the future. The College of Rheumatology plans conventions for 16,000 people and last brought the event to the city in 2015. One of his big conferences alone is worth 53,000 hotel nights he pointed out, not to mention all the meals and other items participants spend money on. But he said conference attendees last time reported feeling unsafe, being followed and being screamed at, and having to step on, step around needles and feces. San Francisco's um, uh, board of supervisors is run entirely by, it's a Democrat, they're all Democrats. Uh, and again, I don't wanna make it sound like, you know, Democrats are evil, they're not. They're doing what they think is right. But what I'm saying is that we've seen it here and it's not working. California state legislature has had absolutely no, or well, largely no, Republican opposition in more than 10 years. Of course, if I got something wrong, miss something, mischaracterize something, please let me know. I'm always willing to correct a mistake with new information and with better information when it comes along. You also can keep the conversation going at Skeptic Tank Show on Twitter and at Skeptic Tank Show on Facebook. And uh, as always, I'm really looking forward to hearing what it is that you think. Asshole! You're an asshole! And you know it!